Hey, I'm Brant Hughes, editor and camera operator, and I really like eclipses and space stuff in general. And as it just so happens, on April 8th, we have a total solar eclipse coming our way. It's kind of a big deal. Brian also really likes eclipses and space stuff. So we're gonna go find him and we're gonna go talk about eclipses in general and also an event we're having on the day of the eclipse. Real casual conversation style. You're in the command center over here. A lot of vectors to coordinating <laughs> this event and we'll find out whether or not we nail it or not. What would you like to speak of first, my friend? We should kind of just talk about, you know, we, we got this big total solar eclipse coming up and a pretty rare event. And I think it'd be useful to walk people through like, uh, how do okay. you know when it happens, where it happens? We, we know there's gonna be an eclipse and I don't, I don't think I've publicly really spelled this part of the story out. Like, we bought this production facility and I sunk all of my family's finances into it, partly because of its wonderful backstory of people who came before. And then I, I happened to look and I happened to see the eclipse. Um, and because you warned me that you were gonna ambush me with video, uh, I did pull this up. NASA put out, uh, I don't know, about a year ago, this map, and it is totally, completely rad that in October, we kind of got like a dress rehearsal. We got the annular solar eclipse. You know the difference between an annular and a total, right? Yes. Which is? An annular never fully occludes the sun. Yes, and uh, I, what's funny is I placed a little bet with myself. I'm like, I bet he uses the words occludes. <laughs> and I was right. <laughs> uh, whereas a total solar eclipse, <laughs> Total solar eclipse, you get full full blockage of the sun. Okay, you know what? I did not place a bet on Brant saying blockage. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I knew this was coming, and now here we are five years later, and I know I need to put on a good picnic. I know I need to have entertaining people. I know I need to have comedians, musicians. I know it needs to be a celebration of everything that we've done and all that stuff. But what happens if it's cloudy? What happens if, uh, what would it look like? So, okay, yeah, there we are. So, here we are. This is where we are right now. Don't show up without telling us. Every time you see the sacrifice pit that's over here, here's the, the murder bus, using those coordinates, you can enter your coordinates into the Eclipse Simulator at eclipse2024.org, and it will show you a simulation of the Eclipse from that specific location, including very specific timings, um, the, the duration of the Eclipse, how high in the sky the Eclipse will be, you know, stuff like that. But you can see right up here, it's hard to see, you're watching the sun get occluded by the moon. I, I prefer the sun gets eaten by the moon. Here we go, you can actually see the shadow creep up on us, right? So, cause we're in West Austin. And then there's this one moment where it gets all the way dark. And what I didn't know is that during totality, I was like, what's going on here? What's going on here? Whoa, what's going on here? I did not know that pretty much every visible planet outside of Mercury will be visible during totality. If you've never seen an, an eclipse before, please understand that in your entire lifetime, every time you've ever looked up at the sky and seen a celestial body, it has always, the biggest it has ever been, has been roughly the size of your thumbnail held at arm, arm's length both the moon and the sun, and you know, maybe you see a uh, comet and maybe it's kind of bigger, who knows. But uh, when, when the sun gets completely covered, you really get to see the corona. And the corona is not just like four times bigger, it's massive. Uh, Brent, have you ever seen have you ever seen this? I have not. Um, well, not with my eye. I've seen photos of it and stuff. Okay. You suddenly understand why religions get started. It's incredibly valuable 
to have the sun occluded so you can study the corona without, you know, a satellite and what have you. I will also say that on a personal level, it's a very special experience. And this is NASA's chart. This is the annular eclipse. This is gonna be what people are already calling the great American eclipse. The next time we'll have one of these will be in, I believe, 2043. I may be wrong on that. It'll be 2044, and that will be only at the very northern tip of the US. So like the real one will be 2045. So and that'll cut across the US horizontally. I've got like Google News alerts on this stuff. And what most people do, which makes sense, is they look at the path of complete totality because that's the most eclipse you're gonna get, right? Uh, there's a town called Fredericksburg that has a population of 24 to 25,000 people. They are expecting 200,000 people to show up. I understand why everybody would want to be what, on whatever the magic line is, but man, if you want kids crying and people getting cranky and trying to think of where a toilet is or a porta potty or so on, great, go do that. Here, oh, poor us. We're only gonna have about a minute and 36 seconds of totality. And it's gonna look like this. Uh, here, let me, let me uh, open it. Actually, I think it's gonna be a bit longer. I think it's gonna be like two minutes, 40 seconds or something like that. Are you, are you sure? Because we wanna have a certain song hit at exactly totality, which means we're gonna have to time it down to the second. And we hit totality, live performance, Just imagine that spiritual moment. You wanted to talk about the astronomy of it, but I got caught up in the narrative of it. But keep in mind, here's the important part, is we're still at totality for a healthy amount of time. That's actually one of the things I wanna talk about is sort of the gradient of the duration of totality. If you look at the map, you know, if you're right on the far edge, you'll get a second of totality. If you're right in the center of the path of the shadow, you'll get four minutes, 20 seconds. The interesting thing for me is that there is a bit of a gradient. You know, maybe I live right on the edge of totality and I want to go in a little bit so I can see it for a little bit longer. Um, that number climbs up pretty fast. You would, you would think, oh, if I go halfway to the center, I would get two minutes, 10 seconds or something like that. But actually you get like three minutes and 20 seconds. Yeah, that's that... Um... Uh, 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 inver inverse square or square law stuff where it's like, whoa, things happen real fast. Yeah. Okay, so it only took me about five seconds of actually thinking about this in the edit and all of a sudden it made a whole lot of sense. This all works, of course, because the moon's shadow is a circle. It's a big circle, like 120 miles across, but it's a circle. And so when you stay in one point and the shadow passes over you, you're effectively cutting what's called a cord across the shadow. A cord is just a straight line where the start point and end point are on the edge of a circle, right? And so when you're closer to the center of the path of totality, that cord is basically the diameter of the circle. And when you're out on the far edge, that cord is effectively a tangent. And so as you creep further and further in towards the diameter, towards the center point of that circle, your duration is increasing proportional to the length of that cord or the width of the circle. Uh, yeah, it, you know, sometimes you just have to think about things and it makes sense. But it's useful to note that, you know, if people aren't able to make it out here or get their way into the path of totality at all, as long as they're in the continuous United States, they will get a partial eclipse. So you could go to something like NSO, the National Solar Observatory, they study the sun for a living. They've got a map where you can just kind of click on the map and it'll tell you exactly what the duration of totality will be from that location and when that starts, when that ends. So that's just like a good planning tool. And then of course, you know, as we mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a lot of people, there's gonna be a lot of traffic, 
the roads are gonna be very crowded. So you kind of have to use that to sort of compromise where are you going to observe it from? That's gonna factor in. And of course, if you're like, oh, I'll just drive up the road and watch it from this place. Well, they're probably gonna be packed. Right, the NASA stuff is good. Uh, I, I'll vouch for this simulator. The Eclipse simulator is has one thing that I think is very, very important, which is, so you notice right here, it says warning, certified eye protection must be used. And then it crosses over into totality. And now we're in totality and it's counting down to the second where we're at. And then it, it, it tells you, all right, this is the exact to the second moment that you need to put those goggles back on. Yeah, and with the eclipse, you know, if you're going out to take photos of the eclipse or video of the eclipse or something like that, you're not gonna have a lot of time to do it, right? You're gonna have at most four and a half minutes. So something like this simulation is really nice because you can, you can kind of prep for it. You can, you can kind of, if, if you're gonna do something like that, you can get your equipment out and sort of time it and then day of, you're ready to go. You know exactly what to expect. You're gonna know what to look for. As I understand it, and you could correct me because I know you've done more of the research than I have, but basically proto-Earth is chilling out and they get smashed into by a roughly a Mars-sized body called, oh, what was it, Theia? Theia. So, yeah, Theia. What I did not know, what I got to learn today is everything goes liquid, spins around, I would have figured that's, you know, a thousand years, but you were citing a study from 2022 that ran a simulation that said, nope, how about 24 to 48 hours? And yeah. at that point, everything settled. How, how did you come across that? There's a really fantastic PBS Space Time video that came out last year that goes through it. Okay. But yeah, it is really fascinating because it's just, it's, it's a thing that doesn't really come across the simulations until it reaches a certain fidelity. Um, once, once you have, few, when you have fewer particles, it just doesn't work out like that and it takes months for things to settle down. But it just so happens that once you get to like hundreds of millions of particles, they make decisions very quickly about where they belong. <laughs> yeah, it's really kind of wild. On top of that, the ability to model it is fairly recent, right? with com computational power and so on. Probably, yeah. I, I mean, I, in the history of mankind, certainly. Yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. Uh, pretty recent, <laughs> right? We'll talk a bit about kind of um, arranging your own narrative experience to make sure that you enjoy it the most uh, in the future. But for now, um, if you would like to watch The Eclipse with me and Brant, uh, we're working very, very hard on a cool experience. Please tell me I'm getting this URL right. FoundersDayEclipse.com. Yeah. Hey, I did it. We registered that an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> It'll take you straight to uh, your opportunity to come be here with us for what literally might be the event of a lifetime. We'd really like to see you guys. Yep. Next eclipse in what, 20, 20 years. 44. <laughs> yep. Watch it now. If, if, if you, if you want to watch it, guys, no better look, time than now. You have no idea how difficult the moon's agent is to work with. <laughs> like to get the moon to guarantee that it'll show up on time for a, a party, very difficult. And on a Monday, gosh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna get nothing done on that day, I guarantee you. <laughs> Modern Rogue is supported in part by viewers like you at patreon.com slash modern rogue. In the description, you can find all of our credits and additional ways to support the show. Allegedly, this has to be a myth, I don't believe it, but allegedly Christopher Columbus got his way by, with, with the locals, the natives, when he got to India, AKA North America by saying, oh, I don't know. Seems to me like you ought to do whatever I tell you to do because on this exact day, mm, uh, my powerful deity is going to scare you. And they did uh, because he knew about eclipses. That's so dirty. It is. <laughs> However, as a magician, <laughs> game got to respect game. <laughs>